So welcome to King Size Jack. I know you came to China from America in 2010, and you have been practicing martial arts for nearly 30 years. So what's your main job here? Right now, I'm a 16th generation Sanfeng Pai disciple. So I teach martial arts primarily. I also teach Taoist culture. I teach Chinese music with the Dongxiao, the bamboo flute. Um, so right now, most of my job is transmission of these traditional cultures. And how many students do you have in total? And how many of them are from China? How many of them are from other countries? I have a lot of personal students. I also make a lot of videos for free for people to study. So I have different kinds of students. I have some like personal students. Um, over the last, I mean, eight years of teaching, I probably have a couple hundred students. I've been in Wudang teaching the last five years, five or six years now. Um, so I have students all over the world. I mean, a lot in China, um, but more in like America, Canada, um, Belgium, Spain, Australia, Switzerland. So kind of spread out all over. <laughs> and do you think uh, martial arts or wushu is getting more popular in the world? De definitely, especially some of the softer practices like Tai Chi Chen, uh, Qigong, meditation, some of these like what we call Nei Jia Chen, the internal practices. Um, these are definitely getting more popular because a lot of people spend time doing very athletic sports, um, very dynamic um, coordination, and now people are trying to find something to balance that out. So with our training system, we have a lot of Kung Fu, like the martial arts, the harder practices, um, but we also have a lot of soft practices like Tai Chi to make more balance. So definitely more people are more interested in this today. I want to know how long does it take to master martial arts? So I think like to be able to learn martial arts, Okay, maybe uh, if you're thinking about the Wudang system, our, our traditional program is five years long. Um, that's what I came through. But that was day-to-day, year-round practice. Nothing else, just martial arts. And so that's a pretty intensive course. And even five years, it kind of feels like an introduction at the end. Um, to master martial arts is a lifelong practice. I don't think there's ever a finish point. And you are already a master now, and I want to know, were there any interesting stories when you just began your journey here in Wudang? Um, when I first came here, I mean, it was really different. I was 20 years old. I came to China to come to Wudang to study martial arts. So I arrived here with just this purpose, but I had no prior experience. I hadn't learned anything before I came here. So everything was a pretty big challenge, uh, especially the flexibility. Um, the language, of course, when I came here, I didn't speak any Chinese, so that was something to kind of learn so I could also learn the practices more clearly. Um, and then you have things like the philosophy, the Taoist culture, some of the history. This all takes time. But I would say definitely the hardest and most obvious change is with the body, with the flexibility, the stamina, the strength, these kinds of things. How did you overcome all the difficulties you, you just mentioned? Mostly just time. Um, the, way, the way we practice here is we have the idea of eating bitter. We have this idea of like persevering and, and really day-to-day -day practice. So the difference here is we, we're such an intensive course that you wake up in the morning at 5.30 and you train until 9, 10 o'clock at night. And so you're training eight to nine hours a day. And so the first week, the second week, it's a different level of, of pain, of, of kind of uh, difficulty. Right? And it takes a lot just to overcome that. But in time, the flexibility things, you, you really have to, you have to put time into it. And you have to give time to yourself to practice and to improve and to recover as well. Um, so I would say something, everything's different. Everyone's at a different level. Um, I would say for me, the first six months were very difficult to get flexibility, get the coordination, start to understand the basics of the system. Um, and yeah, that was definitely difficult. Coming, I'm, I'm coming from America and from a place in the Midwest where things like, like flexibility are not really centered in our sports system. Uh, it's more about strength and power and direction and everything. Um, trying to switch gears into this kind of softer, larger practice with big kicks and jumps and everything, um, that was a pretty big change for me. So it was actually, it was very difficult personally, but it was one of those things that once you commit to saying, okay, my goal is to be in control of my health. My goal is to take care of myself for a long time, uh, be healthy, be strong, be fit. Then all, all of these things don't, they don't become difficulties. They become like, oh, I have to do this. And so I really committed to it. 
and, and put a lot of time into the practice in the early stages. Now let's talk about your family. I know you have your family here and you married a uh, Chinese lady mm -hmm. and you have a very lovely daughter with her. Mm -hmm. uh, so I want to know um, how does a day in your life look like now and can you balance um, practicing martial arts and your personal life? So I, yeah, I did get married here uh, to, to a Chinese uh, lady and, and we have a daughter, she's eight years old, almost nine. And, and yeah, uh, a lot of that has changed my training uh, because having a family, there's other um, important parts of your life that you have to take care of, you have to take care of your family. And so of course I can't train 10 hours every day anymore, um, but I've also graduated from the program. And so with teaching martial arts, I can kind of design my own uh, schedule too. So outside of teaching, I also have time to be with the family. Um, the great thing is I'm kind of, my life is kind of centered around this practice, and so is my family. And so we, we study together. I teach my daughter martial arts. Um, she's also involved in learning Chinese music and some of the traditional cultures, uh, cultural practices. And so that's really nice because for us, the, for example, the martial arts is our healthy practice. And so as a family, that's something we can learn together. It's something that uh, maybe I will practice a little more of uh, intensely because I'm also teaching it and I have more responsibility. But my family is also very interested. My daughter likes to learn. And then she has that practice to be healthy and also spend time together. So I'm also really lucky. I believe there are some people who, who also want to come to China mm -hmm. to learn martial arts. So I want to know what was the initial transition for you? Um, how did you adapt to the new lifestyle and culture here mm -hmm. since um, Wudang is very different from where you, you're from, right? Uh, yeah, so I first came here in 2010 mm -hmm. to learn anything like this, whether it's language or martial arts or something. I really had to immerse myself in the practice. So it was definitely something that I had to commit to for a period of time. Um, for people who want to get started, it is uh, daunting. It is a big thing to ask to move to another country to learn martial arts. I don't necessarily recommend that for everybody. I think there's more and more options today than there was available when I came here. For example, when I came here, there was no smartphones. So I came here on a wish and a prayer and I had one book with like a dictionary and it was very difficult to arrive in Wudang. Uh, today is much more convenient. There's much more access. I'm also promoting um, videos and information online about Wudang so people have more uh, resources to learn from. And so I think that that's really important. I think use as much as you can to prepare, but if you really find something that you love or something that you want to train or, or learn some skill you want to learn, definitely take the opportunity uh, because life has a way of kind of going by very quickly and you lose a lot of opportunity if you always think, okay, one day I will do it. So back in 2010, was Hubei or Wudang your first stop? Yeah, I came to China to come to Wudang to study martial arts. I looked at other places, like for example, I did look at going to a Shaolin school mm -hmm. before I came to China, um, but inevitably I ended up choosing Wudang because of the philosophy, because of the practice. I thought it suited what I was looking for. So yeah, my first stop, my first travel in outside of America actually was China, straight to Wudang. I know you have been to Wuhan several times, and mm -hmm. so are you familiar with the city and uh, any interesting stories between you and Wuhan? So actually 13 years ago when I first came to China, I landed in Wuhan. And that was my first, that was the first city I was in, I guess. But I was only there for a day because I was just transferring to come to Wudang. But that was definitely my first like culture shock as far as like coming here and not understanding the language. I, I had learned a little bit online before I came and I had like the dictionary, but when I came to China, I lost my luggage. I missed a couple flights. And so when I finally got to China, I was pretty exhausted. I, I was kind of, I didn't know what to do. I was kind of lost. And uh, it was very interesting because Wuhan, I arrived in June, which was like the hottest part of the year. And it was pretty intense to just land and, and not know where I had to go from the airport to the train station. And so I, I luckily, just by the help of random strangers, um, was able to get to the train station. And it, everywhere I went, it was really nice because I was obviously lost and, and people would come up and help me within a few minutes. And so I, I was very, very thankful. Like if it wasn't for the people of Wuhan just helping me, I probably would have turned home. And because that was the way I knew. I knew how to go home, but I didn't know how to get to Wudang when I had arrived in China. How do you make sense of Taoism now? 
I mean, there's a lot of lessons to be learned, like for example, just in the Tao Te Ching and the cornerstone of Taoism. I would say that one of the biggest things I've learned is definitely what you surround yourself with, what you put in your body, what you eat, what you consume with media, with your diet, with your practice. Whatever this is, these are the ingredients that make up your life. So in Taoism, we say like Tao Fa Ren. So the Tao follows nature. And because of that idea, as Taoists, as martial artists, however, we try to follow the natural way. We try to follow a natural path. And I think that that's really important. And I think also that the more you understand that what you bring into your life is what transforms your life. You know, we often say in the West, like your, your company of friends has a big influence on you. But I think also everything to your diet, to your practice, to your sleep schedule has a very big effect on you as well. So we try to incorporate these practices every day. So how has you changed after 13 years of practicing Wushu? Mm -hmm. And how has the place changed? I like to say that I haven't, um, but, but I feel like I've become more of myself, maybe become a little more balanced, I hope, um, both emotionally, physically, I hope. Um, I know when I go home, everyone says that I'm completely different, but I feel like a, a more true version of myself. This is what I feel like. I mean, over the 13 years, there's definitely been a big change, not just here, but all over China. Um, throughout the province, throughout all the different cities, I'd say the biggest change is definitely the convenience of modern media, of the infrastructure. Now travel to, to Wudang throughout, throughout China really is all much easier. Um, like I said before, when I came here, I rode the green train from Wuhan to China, or to, to Wudang, sorry. Um, and now you have the fast train, you have the, you have the airport in Wudang as well. And we have social media where we can connect with each other a lot easier. Of course, the city has grown. Of course, there's more people. There's more people visiting and more students learning. So what's your plan going forward and will you stay in Wudang? So for now, I'm continuing my own practice. I'm doing my own research and translation of some of the texts so that I can share that with my students because I really want to have more more information, more resources for everyone to learn from and also continue my own practice. But I think after uh, my goal is to eventually open up my own school, I would really like to have uh, a school in China and maybe a school in America as well. Because I think that right now I'm a bridge between cultures. I, I know a lot of people in the West who would like the opportunity to come here, but maybe don't have the time or the resources. So I'd like to be able to bring a piece of Wudang to them uh, back home. But I think that I, I can't really separate my life from Wudang anymore. So I think having a home here, this is really my second home. So I think I will always return to Wudang and, and connect my students, uh, hopefully the next generation, to this traditional culture. Thank you very much for uh, making time for us and for thank you for uh, sharing your experience and your insights with us. Okay. Thank you for the opportunity.